Welcome everyone and to see Wing Yi from the Yearly Network and my co-host is Julie. How are you, Julie? Fine. Good morning, Sam Wing. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Today, we're going to go over some great investment opportunities and just stay tuned. Watch towards the end because at the end, you can get some very good value add mm-hmm. you are going to become a real estate investor. Julie and I went through this. A number of times on our podcast every right. week, we cannot emphasize the fact that a rental property as a potential landlord, you are on the verge of achieving each property you own, especially long-term. Rental property is history of most powerful and proven multi-dimensional real estate asset class. It's the world's greatest wealth-building investment vehicle because there are four ways you can make money long-term, cash flow, passive income, tax benefits appreciation and leverage. Now we, Julia, you and I for the several years now doing a hundreds of videos, we talk about the above the surface, the, the right. something we can see and we can feel the cash flow and appreciation, right. right? Cash flow and appreciation that's above the surface, right? The tip of the iceberg, what most potential investors out there, real estate investors out there, they do not see the greater right. profit margin. What's below is- the iceberg? What's below, literally in that example, the bulk of the iceberg is below the waterline. Yeah. So yeah. most people only see the cash flow, but That's the right. major benefits, the bigger benefits are below the surface. Well, Julie, you and I, we love to present in a way that are, is we are out of the box uh, presenter. Mm-hmm. That, that means we present things that will... Uh, are different and provide value add. It's something that most investors... If you have, if you are not watching these podcasts, you're not going to get this kind of information. Okay, mm-hmm. that's how cutting edge we are, we are as real estate investors within our network. So, with that said, today we can talk about amazing attributes of below the surface, below the iceberg, which is tax benefit. Okay, mm-hmm. and we can talk about a little bit about the power of leverage, the power of using a thirty year fixed rate mortgage to purchase your one to four unit properties and. Right. So let's talk about tax benefits because most people just almost, whether you're a newbie or not, even some savvy investors, you, they just don't clearly understand what type of benefits they uh, they can have. So today we can talk about this one specific market. We talked about it before. Let's talk about it from a different perspective. And we can, we can dive into the best small multi-units uh, purchase in the country. You can, we're not going to go over the numerical stuff, but uh, you know, we have done other videos that can talk about the numerical formulas and what have you. But knowing that this is a 1% rule, but rent to value ratio, mm-hmm. 8% cap rate at least, we can talk right. about small multi-units, which with a new construction, which is very rare, very difficult to find anywhere in the country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For, furthermore, uh, we can talk about a fast growing uh, metro that uh, not only the one of the fastest growing in Texas, but fastest growing in the country, in my opinion. And of course, the location you can buy in this is pretty much A class, A minus, or even B plus location, A minus the B plus the tenants, the category of tenants. And mm-hmm. uh, I said I'm not going to divulge too much into the specific metro because if I don't want to, I don't want too much, too many people to know about it. It'll saturate this local market. I just want to have a, a small group of investors that can ride the wave with us. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't want, I don't personally, I don't want the rest of the country to know about this because like I said, I want our value investors that are within our network or watch whoever watching this podcast to, to benefit because I want you to guys to get in before everybody else. Exactly. Uh, before the national media learns about it. All right. So for that reason, Julie, to be honest, I'm very reluctant to provide the specific region to promote because if I people take my information on their own. No, and, right, right, right. Yeah. And they're gonna they're gonna saturate and bombard this currently a fairly small market mm, mm-hmm. compared to the larger metros in Texas, especially, right? Anyway, but anyway, so this market I can I can only give you it is in southern part of Texas. When you find this kind of metro metrics, if you will, work class medical centers, right? Mm-hmm. All these different medical clinics and hospitals and all the supporting uh, medical staff, technicians and, and doctors and nurses and uh, support healthcare specialists, all type of specialty. You very rare you see a, a metro with only a county, such as here in Texas, where 
have a, around 1 million people, which is quite large actually, to have that many medical clinics. So when you have a healthcare industry that is so expansive, it, 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 it just makes this house market very intriguing, very interesting, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and then it brings, I'm just thinking from an investor's perspective, it brings a very high quality tenant. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. So especially in a growing emerging market, the path of growth where everything is new, pretty much everything's new. When you see a city, a metro, where the freeway is being built, hotels are being built, parks mm -hmm. are being built, mm -hmm. construction of all types, commercial constructions, residential, and, and everything else, and new hospitals, new medical centers, new colleges and universities. These are, metrics are just so enticing. It just screams housing growth, metro, yeah. right? It screams. Right. Anyway, so again, we're not going to go over the, the details, but there are so many top-rated colleges and universities. The University of, uh, of Texas at, at the, is one of the satellite campus of his look. look. Sure here and they have a medical college also and all the two-year colleges all the trade schools all the schools mm -hmm. all these colleges are producing people that have jobs when they graduate they, they initially they're going to become tenants and they're going to become your tenants our tenants if we buy rental property in this metro right absolutely makes sense yeah and of course again i'm not gonna we already dive very deep into this this information we're not going to spend more time on it at this moment because the purpose of this video is to talk about some ad, value add tax benefits. It will blow your mind how tax benefit can hurt, can help you guys so much. But again, Julie, you and I, we are not licensed tax advisors. So well, this is just a educational video. You mm -hmm. always, you, all of you should need to consult your own licensed tax advisors to go over your personal situation. Am I right? Absolutely. Makes sense. Makes sense. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Again, this area is growing very fast and it's just, you got to mm -hmm. pull the trigger before, before the whole world finds out about it. So uh, mm -hmm. you, you can look at all these metro data. I'm not going to go there. So are we talking about this, this the small multi-unit, like right? in this yeah. case, uh, fourplex, sixplex, brand new. How rare is that? How rare mm -hmm. you can find a brand new in emerging market, a quad, a fourplex in a Fast, one of the fastest growing. You know what? Okay, I would lay this to you, Julia. You, I talked about this before. You and I did the podcast yeah. recently. You're not going to find a fourplex in this nice location anywhere in the country, for that matter. We're talking more than more than four thousand square foot on this quad, and then with the cost is only like in a low five hundreds. Uh, That's amazing. It, that is absolutely yeah, Julia. I. Over the past 20 years, I, I've been to, uh, I have taken my groups of uh, real estate investors from, especially mainly from California to buy mm -hmm. out of state. And right. all these years we entered the Florida, Texas of the world, South and Southeast, and even in the Midwest, I've never seen a, the value of buying a four unit brand new in a fast growing area for only 500, a uh, little bit more than 500,000. This is shocking, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and right. the numbers, we'll, we'll go over the number. We didn't go over the tax benefit above and beyond everything else you, you're getting. And we could go over the total return on your investments. And when we're going to discuss the total return of an investment, is over, the number we can go over is very realistic. We're not going to overhype anything. We can show you some data that mm -hmm. are a very realistic data. Okay. And just, right. I don't need. I do not need to overhype this market. I do not need to overhype this kind mm. of uh, investment strategy. Am I right, uh, Julie? Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. That's a fantastic. Pro Those are fantastic properties, new builds. Look at the quality of these properties and the price. The price is yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go over too much uh, because right. we want to make this presentation uh, short and sweet. But you look at the numbers, okay? It's amazing. Don't waste your time to try to research any other market that shows a, a fourplex for for this price, five forty five k. Yeah, each two two of the units are three bedroom, two bath. The the other two units are two bedroom, two bath. A little bit more than one thousand square foot. Yeah. And look at look at the rent, fifty four hundred dollars. And the and the rents, I believe, is going to go up since uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. On all four doors, is fifty four hundred. We're talking like uh, twelve thirteen hundred dollars per door. Per right, unit, for a right. total of 5,400. And 
on a price that's only 545K, we talk about 1% rule, 1% rent to value ratio. That, mm -hmm. That's a mind boggling. That yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the property taxes in excess of 2%, 2.3, 2 2.4%, it's not about the high property tax. It's about the, your overall return. It's about the, the metric. It's about the rent to value ratio, the capitalization mm -hmm. rate, 7.6%, cash and mm -hmm. cash rate, 26%. And total return, I want you to, go, we're going to go back to this overall 28%. Okay. In fact, let's go over this. Okay. So you do a 25% down payment, even at a 6.8% 30 year fixed rate mortgage for investor. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You date the interest rate. Now you marry the quad, you marry, you marry the fourplex. What I mean by that? Because the interest rate, when and if the interest rate go down from whatever today's rate, when you buy this property, mm -hmm. because it's a good deal. Two or three years later, if the rate come down to 6% or even 5.5%, guess what? You can refinance for a lower rate and that, therefore increasing your monthly net cash flow even more than it's mm -hmm. currently showing, right? Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. But that's a great cash flow where it is. Like, that's a fantastic cash flow. Yeah. And again, remember, that's just tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're talking just cash flow and uh, uh, equity appreciation potential. Right, and, uh, right. On the subsequent uh, slides, we're going to show you, we can talk about below the iceberg, uh, which right. which is going to, the tax benefit, which is absolutely mind boggling. For anybody that have the down payment money, if you can do a 25% down payment, which is a minimum to buy mm -hmm. a multi-unit, that's a that's a lending guideline for investors. Take it or leave it. Minimum 25% is not going to be that cheap. Total, mm -hmm. including closing costs, uh, out of pocket at 25% down payment at 6.88%. Is a uh, uh, it's a little bit less than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars down right, payment. Right, right. So mm -hmm. not everybody can afford that, but a lot of people could, especially for within our network of several thousand uh, investor members that are part of our investment community. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, anyway, so you you do a number, you dive do the numbers, even with a high mortgage uh, tax rate I and mean, high property tax rate. Still, property tax is just one of the debt service component. For God's sake, he's not right. That itself is not a red flag, but as long as your right. rent is high enough to cover all your debt obligations and pay on mortgage mm -hmm. payments and insurance yeah. and property management fee, at the end of the day, you're getting almost $800 a monthly net cash flow. That's really great. That's uh, keep, really awesome. Yeah. Keep this in mind. Okay. Let's do a number. Okay. I hate to talk numbers, but when we're going to show you the tax benefit, it'll even increase this number way beyond a whopping 28% at the end of the first year overall return projection, which is absolutely mm -hmm. mind-boggling, if I have to say that so is. myself. That really is. It's amazing. Okay. Somebody pay attention, okay? If you can replay, for those of you watching this podcast, you can replay it. You can replay it. You can watch it. You, need, you may need to watch it more than once to really understand it. You may not understand yeah. watching just one time. But right. let's look at the metric, okay? I don't want to bore you with details, but this is important. If at... So let's, how do I derive this 28%? By the way, are you going to get any other investments, any kind of similar asset class getting 28% on an annual overall return? No, CD will give you 3 to three to 4% or money right. market give you 3 or 4%. Stocks and bonds give you maybe 6, 7% uh, on a good day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other uh, asset class, I, I, I can't see it. No, absolutely not. That's an amazing return. Yeah, okay, let me quickly show you how I derive it at this number. If the, if your monthly net cash flow is 773, according to this projection pro forma, if you will, mm -hmm. if you analyze it to about 12 times 12 months, almost you have almost $10,000 again, the cash flow, mm -hmm. net annual cash flow. Okay, so far so good? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so the beauty of buying rental property is you're leveraging. You uh, a lender is is uh, helping you with the seventy five percent of the purchase. For God's sake, right? You're not buying hundred percent with cash like you're buying with stocks and bonds and other yeah, traditional asset. Am I right? Yes, that's true. Definitely. Yeah. So the power of leverage that's the great about uh, income property. So anyway, this is the benchmark. This is your total out of pocket. The you buy you're using this leverage, this cash down payment to buy an asset. Three times mm -hmm. greater, 545K. Mm -hmm. Anyway, your annual net cash flow is almost 10 grand. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay. Then, and then there's a principal reduction. I don't know how to calculate this. This software, the loan amortization, give you some kind of intrinsic paper value to the tune of 4,200. Don't ask right. me how to mm -hmm. get this number. I can never figure that out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I projected 5% appreciation, 
3% vacancy maintenance, I guess I'm brand new. I'm not going to project anything to the first year of maintenance because uh, there's, a, there's a short, there's a one year warranty anyway on, on a new construction, which is amazing. By the way, this area is not prone to hurricane. It's not a, it's not a mm -hmm. flood zone. The insurance is very reasonable. There's no elevated insurance premiums like other part of the country. So all those negativity is you know, totally not, does not exist in this right, match, in right. this market. Mm -hmm. okay. so, yeah. If the projection, only a projection of 5% appreciation, this is just a projection when no one can predict the future. Yeah, if it is 5% at the end of the first year, 5% equity growth multiplied by the purchase price, 545K, yeah, you're getting like first at the end of the first year alone, almost 30 grand, all right, of uh, right. on paper equity growth, right? Yeah, 27,000 plus principal reduction loan benefit equate to a uh, uh, paper gain plus mm -hmm. annual net cash flow almost 10 grand equal, follow me, total equity income of around 40,810, right? Amazing. And the final calculation is important for us to understand for those uh, guys out there. Look, these numbers are not rocket scientists. Yeah. At the end of the first year, the total gross equity income, annual net cash flow first year, the end of the first year, principal reduction in the first year, and the appreciation the end of the first year, right? These three numbers add on to 40K, right? 40K are divided by your total cash outlay. Right. 40K divided into 147 equals... That's the 28%, 28 right. return on your investment at the end mm -hmm. of the first year only. Amazing. We're not, we don't have time to talk about the next five to 10 years growth. Okay. When, when you use, you, you, you and I use property tracker, right? And right. when you use property tracker on a, the property tracker will, will show increasing monthly rent on a year to year basis. Mm -hmm. uh, the loan pay down by the, uh, by the tenant over time. And right. then soon the loan that you're getting uh, at today, which is which is four hundred eight thousand dollars of, of a loan balance, this will mm -hmm. be paid off. You're gonna outsource the payment of your debt obligation, including your mortgage, to somebody by the name of a tenant. Yes, <laughs> that, that's, that's a really good point. But yeah, don't get scared away by the loan amount because your tenants are paying off the loan. That's right. Your tenant Very is making. Good point. Yeah, uh, we have to hammer down this point. The tenant gonna make you rich and. In this particular market, the mm -hmm. you, you could have plenty of tenants, college students, college professors, medical healthcare professionals, and nurses, and resident intern doctors. They're going to be renting from you for for a long time to come. The yes, people. absolutely, absolutely. The young people, plus there's a lot of jobs coming in, a lot of high-tech companies and Elon Musk and their SpaceX are located about one hour from, this, from South Texas. They got several thousand of Elon Musk's tech workers are working on the SpaceX the launching pad in uh, right. up, up the street in right. South Texas. Mm -hmm. And right. plus, a lot of, look, a lot of companies are moving to, in this area, transportation, logistical, high tech, medical, you know, the whole nine yards, very diversified economy. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk that ta tax benefit. This is the, uh, this is the main crust of this presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't want to bore you to death, but I want to keep, keep it high level so you can truly believe. I know. Everybody's situation is different depending on your, your tax status, your income, mm -hmm. what have you. But again, consult your own tax advisor mm -hmm. license. But uh, anyway, how to calculate rental property depreciation. This is a simple straight line depreciation. So the your cost basis, which is your purchase price, minus the 20%, which the land is not depreciated. Mm -hmm. You take out the, around 20% of the land component, which is 109. So the new adjusted cost basis to calculate Straight line long term depreciation mm -hmm. four hundred thirty six thousand divided by anything one to four units is a residential investing. Residential houses are mm -hmm. are amortized over twenty seven and a half years. Look at the end of the day, the IRS are giving some tax. I wouldn't call it loopholes. Is very much legal. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, the IRS wants you to get rich because because the rules are the tax rules are set up. If you know how to apply them. To make you to make you wealthier than you what you thought possible, and they're giving you paper write off write off. But when you the IRS when you know when I say depreciate your property, yeah. wow, the IRS think your property is losing value, it depreciating value, right? And they getting they get when we get a tax benefit from their depre or yeah. their rule to be able to depreciate. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. In reality, if you maintain your property over time, if you rehab it, fix it up. 
especially when you buy a brand new, you, there's very little maintenance <laughs> over right. time anyway. So <laughs> exactly, you're benefiting mm -hmm. so much. But on the straight line depreciation on this purchase, do the math. 436 right. divided by 27 and a half years. Every year, you can get almost $16,000 of paper loss. It's called right. passive loss. It's called depreciation. If mm -hmm. you continue to keep your property for 27 and a half years, uh, you can get an annual depreciation right off the bat. Simple calculation. This depreciation will, will reduce your income subject to taxation. That right. There are several thousand dollars additional going to going to enter your pocket when you file your tax return above and beyond the above and beyond the 28% total return you get in the first year of this particular mm -hmm. purchase is mm -hmm. that mind boggling it really is when, when you start to add up the numbers it really is mind boggling but again i think people have to realize it's not just about cash flow there's so many other benefits below the surface Absolutely. See, I took the liberty uh, oh, okay. <laughs> of, uh, of putting a tax return, which, look, if you watch any kind of podcast about taxes, even from a real CPA, licensed tax advisor, they're doing their videos uh, to the to the media. They never go through a deep dive that I'm going through. I'm showing you the tax return. I'm showing you the, the numbers. OK, mm -hmm. See, this is, am I providing value add for it for subscribers out there? Absolutely. Oh, this is amazing value. I don't think you're going to really see this anywhere. Absolutely. I, I, I did my research. A lot of real attorneys and CPAs that promote tax videos, they don't <laughs> do a deep dive on what I'm doing. Okay. Partly because they want subscribers to use their services to pay them. Uh, they, oh, don't wanna, they don't want the real CPAs and tax advisors. They don't want to spill the beans. They don't want to give you too much information. But I'm spilling the beans for you guys. I'm giving okay. you a deep, deep dive that most real tax advisors in in a YouTube channel or any other kind of educational venue they 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 don't give you they don't give you the sizzles absolutely. and absolutely the they don't give you the sizzles and what's the what is the other part of the sizzle the steak and the sizzle and okay, whatever sizzle and the sauce I think it is yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah something like that whatever that thing is <laughs> look we as we discussed this is your uh, this is the fourplex. This is a Schedule E, right? This is Schedule E, Supplemental Income and Schedule. And what it shows is that uh, yeah, these numbers are we plug right out of the pro forma, right out of the, mm -hmm. the, the sheet we just went over, okay? So the gross rent is right here, 64000 for the year. Gross rent. By the way, people a lot of don't know, right? Especially newbies who buy the first rental property, they don't get it until if and when they hire a, uh, a competent CPA right. and help them with the taxes. But whenever you report rental income, People need to digest this. Just hear me out, mm -hmm. okay? Just pay attention. Mm -hmm. This six four eight eight hundred come from the gross rent. You see my see the pro forma. You right. see right here annual sixty four eight hundred mm -hmm. gross rent monthly gross rent fifty four hundred on all four doors. Right, I'm plugging in all the numbers. Okay, all the numbers are here. Is plugged into the tax return. So just pay attention. If you need to watch, if you need to watch this slide or this video more than one, two, or three times, please do because you. No, not mm. all of you are, are that savvy as we are, you and I. Right, right. yes. Sometimes review it more than once or twice is going to really resonate with you. But right. anyway, this, of course, you have to file, you have to report the rent as taxes component right. of it. Now, let's say <clears throat> if you do not reduce your gross rent right here is subject to your ordinary tax bracket. Right. Think about right. it. If you do, if, if somebody... Do you technically, do you know a investor when they file the tax return? They do not have to report any of these. They do not have to report any of these uh, expenses associated right. with running this this rental property. You don't have to. You don't have to report mortgages. You don't right. have to report all this in travel and and um, insurance and taxes and maintenance. Mm -hmm. You don't have to report uh, anything. Okay, if you do not report anything. This gross rent, $64,000 uh, 64, at the first year, is subject to ordinary tax bracket. Look right. at the ordinary tax bracket, uh, Julie. You and I, you, know, you have some tax background uh, in uh, mm -hmm. years ago, right? So uh, it, investment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of uh, investment tax background. You're not a right. licensed tax advisor. And you, no. <laughs> you are now not one. But anyway, you understand the concept I'm trying to teach you. Absolutely. It makes sense. Uh, yeah. Ordinary tax bracket is subject to taxation on its gross rent. But what if you were the highest <laughs> tax bracket of 30, 
the federal 39.5% federal, if you make half a million dollars W-2 income, you may be subject to 39% uh, federal taxation and state, right. state could be 9.3 in California. So mm -hmm. right. uh, if you want to, the marginal tax bracket is 39. Don't quote me, okay? I'm not a licensed tax advisor, but mm -hmm. the, the federal bracket, marginal tax bracket, 39, uh, the, the, the highest layer is, let's say 39%. Uh, the second layer is maybe 35%. Mm -hmm. The third layer is 31%. The fourth layer is 28 percent federal, the first layer of 25, then 15, then 10, then mm -hmm. five, then zero, right. right? It all depends how much money you make. But so, whatever, if you're in a high tax bracket, you know this $64,000 is subject to ordinary taxation. It's your, right. job, it's your job as an investor when you file your tax return. And before you do that, do some tax planning, right? Hire your cool. own tax advisor. Yes. So you have to reduce this gross rent subject to marginal, subject to ordinary taxation. You have mm -hmm. to reduce this gross rent on paper as much as possible so you can pay less taxes overall on, on your rental right. property, right? So far, right. so good? Absolutely. It makes sense. Yes. So mm -hmm. these monthly debt deductions are pretty much giving, pretty much easy to substantiate and document, right? You just, right. Uh, like we're talking advertising, travel, cleaning and maintenance, your monthly insurance, no, annual, annual, this is annual, I'm sorry, annual insurance, mm -hmm. right? then annual property management fee, you might have to pay the mortgage. Pay, the mortgage payment you pay to get the loan for the fourplex, mm -hmm. 30, a whopping 32000 It is right. taxable right. against the gross rent. And then, of course, then the uh, item 16 is tax. Yeah, these taxes, the annual taxes, 10000 which is right. around 2% property tax rate in Texas, which mm -hmm. is whatever. And then utili the utilities, 2000 And then here's a good thing. The, the, the depreciation we talked about, the cost basis, 436 divided by 27 right. and a half years, which is 15854 almost 16000 mm -hmm. And then you pay a little bit of HOA, which is no big deal. Annual HOA, not monthly. <laughs> Annual right. HOA of 600 yeah. Monthly is probably like $50, which is fine. Mm -hmm. No red flag there. So your total expenses on this particular property for the year is 76000 right? You add all right. these up. Guess what? The IRS, because they love you, as long as you, you're above board. Exactly. If, if you are crossing the line as a taxpayer, you get audited, they are your, they're You'll be your, in trouble. They're your enemy. You do not yes. want to be an enemy you of you IRS. Not. They will come after you. That's right. <laughs> but play the rule correctly. There are a lot of legitimate deductions, and I'm sharing mm -hmm. that with you. Anyway, so on paper, you have a, including depreciation, 16 grand per year, on paper, you have a seventy-six thousand dollars expense. Right. It's profit and loss, simple arithmetic, simple exactly. math. Gross rent sixty-four thousand minus your total debt obligation, including depreciation, mm -hmm. seventy-six thousand. So you right. have a, at the end of the year on this one property, you have a loss. Of, you have a paper loss of almost twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. now, if you do cost segregation, which we'll discuss later, your cost segregation you can <clears throat> accelerate your depreciation. Pay a cost segregation company a couple thousand dollars, whatever, to do a engineering cost segregation. You can get double the paper depreciation, the passive mm. costs against your gross wow. income. Okay, so, right. so you have two choices. Okay, now the question is, how much of this twelve thousand or twenty four thousand dollar, if you use cost seg, you can can reduce against your ordinary income? That's a big right. question. Okay, right. we can cover that. Before we cover that, 